Well, we're going to be talking about uh, Harold Percy Brain, who was my great uncle, essentially, on my dad's side. The family lived in Gloucester, down Victory Road in Treadworth, and uh, Harold was born on the sort of or in July and 1896. Um, we have his baptism here at Gloucester Archives, St. St. James's Church, and that was he was baptised on the 15th of July. Uh, 1896. Uh, his dad was called Percy, so that's why Harold got his second name, Percy. Uh, Mum was called Harriet Matilda. Um, that sort of name doesn't appear in the family again, I know. So whereabouts was Harold born then, John? Uh, he was born in Treadworth in Gloucester, um, and the actual address was 14 Victory Road, which is one of the roads off the high street there. Uh, it's all terraced housing. And just to come back to um, the start of Harold's story, before he went to war, after he left school, what was he doing, John? Well, we've got an entry from the 1911 census of Great Britain, and which shows them all living in, in sort of the uh, Victory Road in, in Treadworth. Um, now, at the time, Harold appears to have been working as an apprentice. So he was 15, he'd already left school, and was working as, a, as a, it looks like an apprentice letter press chap. So presumably that's maybe one of the printers at Gloucester. I don't know where exactly in Gloucester, maybe Jennings. They were one of the largest ones in the area. But it's a, it also gives a listing of all the other families. So you've got Percy, who was working down at the, the docks as a, as a flat Miller, and you've got Harriet, his wife, and then you've got the children. So you've got Ethel was the eldest daughter. Um, she was just, she was working at the time, and then you have Harold. Then you've got the sort of the younger ones, so Isabel, Priscilla, Edith, and uh, Danielle. Um, these are all still at school. So this is this is you know it's a good way of looking at certain information. Harold seemed to have a fairly normal childhood, as far as I'm aware. I found nothing on him really until he sort of you know he was signed up to the army in, in the First World War. Um, I presume he entered the sort of, as a private. He joined the Second Fifth Gloucester Regiment, um, which is the sort of Second Battalion. He uh, seems to have become not done quite well because he was a lance corporal within a couple of years. Um, and so the next thing we know about him, we have this lovely little postcard that was sent back from the front. Um, it shows him and another man. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know who is who. We don't know which one's Harold. There's not a huge resemblance to anybody that I can remember in, in my family. If I had to take a guess, I'd say it's the chap on the right. But he looks like he could be a corporal, but there's no insignia showing. Harold say became Lance Corporal. He was given the number 2801. And um, everything seemed to be going fine until the 25th of September 1916. At that time, it looks like the regiment were on the front line and they were at a site called Moated Grange. And they were in an observation post on, on the, sort of in the trenches there when the Germans detonated a mine underneath them. Um, the mine must have done an awful lot of damage. We've looked at the... Um, war diaries of the Gloucestershire Regiment and uh, it actually records that the, at 8.17pm the enemy blew a mine on the southeast top of Maquisson. Uh, it killed six ORs, ordinary ranks, and wounded six ORs. Um, we also know, however, that it did a lot of damage and it seemed to have buried the officer's bunker because afterwards they were reward- the whole regiment or the battalion were rewarded um, uh, 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 the little silver merit thing saying, you know, for the gallant action they'd done in preparing for an attack thinking it was the start of attack. Um, But unfortunately, that killed poor old Harold. Um, We do have another photograph, which was again in the possession of the family, and it's it's what was known as a temporary grave. Apparently, when the soldiers died, they were given initially temporary graves, and then they were sort of reinterred at a later date in the main war cemeteries. So we have this sort of rather poignant picture of Harold's marker, uh, and it looks like a battlefield scene. I always thought it was a battlefield scene, but apparently it isn't. So we talk about, talked about the circumstances in which Harold died, and we've got a document here, John, um, that tells us a little bit more detail about it. Uh, what is this document, first of all? Um, it, it's actually just, they just call it a parchment, uh, but it, it's, it's a sort of award certificate, I guess, that's the best thing. Uh, it's in the um, Soldiers of Gloucester Museum, in their archive. If you're reading down the document, it, it's awarded to the 61st, or South Midland Division, which was the overall um, division of the army that the Gloucestershire Regiment were in. Um, um, and basically reading down it, it just says this parchment has been awarded to and then it's typed in entry the non-commissioned officers and men of B Company 2nd 5th Battalion Gloucestershire Regiment and it should do with their conduct on the night of the 25th September 1916 at the site called Moated Grange. 
And there's a little bit of information about what happened in this. And essentially, it says that when an enemy's mine blew up the section of the front line held by this company, although the company offices were buried in their dugout, the parapet were at once lined to complete preparation made for repelling an attack by the enemy. So essentially, basically, it just means they lost the officers, but the men sort of thought there was an attack coming, so they manned the, manned the sort of trenches and made sure there wasn't. Um, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting document, and I do like the very bit at the bottom of it, which is in, in typed out nicely. It says, this certificate is issued in appreciation of the act, but does not entitle or qualify the recipient to any reward, extra enrolment or pension. So I think that's just superb, saying you've done very well, but you're not going to get any rewards for it. So word came home of Harold's death, John. And um, so what happened to the family after that event? Um, Well, the family story is that uh, when Harold died, it essentially broke the heart of his mother, who was Harriet. Um, Now, that he was one of sort of six children. He was the sort of the eldest son. Um, he had an elder sister and then younger sisters. And my grandmother, who was Priscilla, um, she was the, sort of the number four in the order, I think. Um, and the family sort of seemed to have gone on through the war. But in a 1920, um, the mother died, essentially. Now, the family story is she simply died of a broken heart. She never really got over Harold's death. Um, from that point onwards, obviously the dad needed somebody to run the household, so he basically picked upon my gran, Priscilla. And apparently he was a bit of a tartar with money especially, and she had to sort of run the household. She was still at school at the time, so she had to do that as well, look after all her brothers, do all the cooking and everything, and at the end of the day she had to account for every penny that uh, she spent. And how do we know um, the fact that um, Harold's mother died in 1920, John? Um, well, we've got essentially a death certificate for her. Um, it lists the cause of death as uh, essentially throat cancer. But they say the family story is that it was a broken heart. Um, so whether she stopped speaking and just went in on herself. But it certainly it was in November of 1920 she died. By which time the family sort of moved out from their pre-war lodgings into the high street. They moved about 150 yards, something like that.